And then we move on to uh, what we'll probably spend the most time talking about for the rest of the cast is uh, maybe not even that much time because we can't our yeah. brains can't <laughs> comprehend it, honestly. And that is Sanders control deck. So there are a few certainties in life, right? Death, taxes and Sander making top eight at a regionals with a control deck. It's going to happen at any tournament he shows up at. He's going to play control. And this list is wild Azul. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. There's a lot going on. I had a chance to play a couple games with it the other day. I actually won all the games I played with it. Um, probably not all in the uh, the route that is most optimal, but uh, <laughs> I started I started putting like the the lines of play. Um, uh, started putting it together with some. The, I started putting it together some of the lines of play to you know close out games. You got a lot of energy disruption for the Mew matchup specifically, and then against the Arceus decks, you got that. Altaria loop that you can set up with the Eldegoss eventually, and you can kind of just loop Altaria uh, or loop heal Altaria with Eldegoss if they set up an Italian to attack. And if they don't set up an Italian to attack, you just kind of leave the Altaria in the active and kind of win the game. So it was, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that the deck can do. There's a lot of stuff in it that I don't understand why it's there. Like the wheezing is interesting. It feels pretty good against Mew, but I don't know if there's like a specific matchup for it or not. Like there's just like a whole bunch going on in there. <laughs> yeah, no surprise that uh, Sander brought something that uh, not not quite any everyone else understands and then uh, that they got top eight as well. Yeah, this is definitely the type of deck that the person who made it is the only one who can, you know, truly play it to its full potential, right? Because I'm sure that this, whenever Sander started testing control, it probably looked 40 cards different than what this version of the deck looks <laughs> like, right? And it just evolves over time. As you test certain matchups, you know what's good, you know what's bad, you know what lines are best. I would imagine Sander put, you know, dozens and dozens, potentially hundreds of hours probably dozens and dozens, hundreds kind of gets a little high, but you know, a lot of hours nonetheless of uh, testing into this deck because it is definitely, it's a wild one. So I, just, I guess to explain the process of the deck is you've got Zoark uh, with its phantom transformation ability, which lets you swap it with a stage one Pokemon in your discard pile. So it plays a three, two Zoark line, you got the 3-3 three, three Chinchino line with its make-do ability. You got three Snorlax, so that's kind of your setup and your draw power is Chinchino and Snorlax. And Chinchino also gets your Pokemon in the discard pile. And then depending on what matchup you are playing, you know, if you're against a Mew deck, if you're against a, um, a Arceus deck, if you're against Gengar, whatever the matchup may be, you can maneuver what you want to do based off of that. And you can also maneuver what you want to do based off of what your opponent does, right? So even within matchups, you have so many different lines of play. There's not like, a, oh, I'm playing against Movie Max. This is my game plan. It's like, oh, I'm playing against Movie Max. These are my seven game plans, right? <laughs> and you have to determine based on what they do, which is the best one, which is just so, so wild. So some of the stage one Pokemon in this deck that you're trying to swap out with Zork, we've got the Altaria, which you also have two Swablu in here. So it's Altaria's Miraculous Charm prevents all damage done to it by Pokemon V and GX, which doesn't do much against Mew since they can max Miracle it most of the time. But against yeah. Arceus decks, their only way to hit it generally in lists right now is... Uh, Intellion. You know, they play the Galarian Moltres, but that only does more damage if you've taken prize cards. Sander's not planning to take prize cards, right? So that's no problem. And then uh, so with a uh, with the one copy of Pot Helmet, the tool card from Brilliant Stars, you put it on the Altaria. Altaria doesn't get KO'd to Aqua Bullet. And then you Sharon's Care, pick up the Altaria, put it onto the Benched Swablu, which didn't get damaged from Aqua Bullet because of the mana fee that you play, which is protecting your bench from getting damaged. There's just so much happening here. And uh, all of that you know, combos together perfectly for this to just be able to beat those types of things. And I just want to run through the other stage one Pokemon. It's got an 011 Dusknoir line. So one Dusclops, one Dusknoir, no Dusk Skull with the Spectral Be Breach. All special energy attached to Pokemon uh, provide colorless energy and have no effect. Great against double turbo energy. Good against fusion strike energy uh, because it means Meloetta doesn't really do any damage. Though I guess the Mew player doesn't really want to attack with Meloetta right in this matchup. We've got the 1-1 one, one yeah, Rabombi. Sorry, go ahead. But that, that like uh, specifically shuts down single strike decks for the most part. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The Dustnor, you just can't. You just, we get it in play. Dustnor and like any other single strike deck just can't attack. 
And then a 1-1 one, one Rabombi, which I didn't even realize this card existed, which seems kind of wild <laughs> because the effect of it is pretty good. It deals 30 damage, and then you move an energy from your opponent's active to one of their benched Pokemon. So you can, you know, if you're against a Mew player, you just throw the Rabombi up there and put that energy on a Genesect. <laughs> and it's not going to do them much good on a Genesect because uh, it can only Technoblast every other turn, and Technoblast can't hit through Altaria. So that's... You know, so many different ways. We got the one Weezing you talked about, one Gorbis to shut down <laughs> Rapid Strike Pokemon so that even, you know, maybe the one win condition you had as an Intellion deck was your quick shooting. You can still spread damage with quick shooting. Nope, not with Gorbis <laughs> existing. Uh, and then we've got, uh, and that's all the stage one Pokemon. We've got one Manaphy and one Pukamuku, one Eldegoss V. And Eldegoss V is kind of a key piece to this deck because it allows you to infinite... Uh, your resources so that you never deck out, which is kind of a crazy process in and of itself. Yeah, it's got like the... You you, you can attack with Eldegoss to put it back in your deck, and when you put Eldegoss in play with his ability, you can search your discard pile for a supporter card, and then the one supporter card that you can use to kind of basically create infinite resources is Team Yell's Cheer, which allows you to search your discard pile for three supporters or Pokemon and shuffle those back into your deck. Um, you can also just kind of do the standard uh, like bird keeper loop where you like use Eldegoss, you get bird keeper, you switch into the Eldegoss, you attach the Eldegoss, you attack with Eldegoss, you put Eldegoss back in the deck, <laughs> um, and then you draw for turn. And then if you don't draw into the Eldegoss, you use Pukumuku to force the Eldegoss into your hand, still having one card in the deck so you don't deck out. And then you put down the other gas. Oh no! I guess you could do that all in one turn, anyways. You only have to do that when you have the. I, I had a situation where I had the dust norm play, so I had to attach the Eldegoss twice to mm. be able to do the Eldegoss loop. So in that situation, you have to use a Pukumuku. But if you can use your DTE, you just draw the Eldegoss, put it down, get the yeah, bird keeper, basic, bird keeper, right? Eldegoss, attach, repeat. But whenever you want like extra stuff, like besides just the bird keeper, if you want to get, I don't know, whatever else you want to get, you can just use the team yells cheer, put back three cards. Eldegoss can recover the team yells cheer constantly and you just kind of repeat that process over and over you could just like get all your stuff back if you wanted to which you probably don't want to and you can eventually win by drawing six prize cards because eldegoss does do well 30 damage with the dt so it'll take a while but um if your opponent's doing absolutely nothing because you got an altera in your active you can eventually win by doing 30 damage turn after turn after turn but uh the next wild it's crazy um super cool to see though super cool to see sander be able to come up with something i think that's the coolest part is that sander was able to still come up with something and uh, i hope they can co constantly do it even if no one else can kind of pick up the decks and play with them the the fact that it is possible is the uh, is the best part about it overall i think absolutely i mean everyone was talking about how there's no room for creativity in this format and here comes <laughs> sander's creative brain and making crazy stuff happen so big shout out to oh, yeah. sander always love seeing the unique decks that they come up with